gastro masa, gastronomiye dair bakış açınızı değiştirecek top dolu içeriğiyle devam ediyor efendim. Yemek ve ruh arasındaki bağ en iyi şekilde yansıtan şeflerden biri geliyor şimdi sevgili Rodolfo Guzman. Teşekkür ederim. 2006 yılında Borago'yu kuran Guzman, Şili'nin endemik ürünlerini taşıdığı mutfağıyla beğeni topluyor. Yerel üreticilerle kurduğu ilişkiyle de adından söz ettiren başarılı şef, aynı zamanda Şili ürünleri üzerine araştırmalarıyla tanınan CIB Araştırma Merkezi'nin de kurucusu. Bugün Şili'den çok özel bir lezzetle bizlerle birlikte olacak. Alkışlarınızla Rodolfo Guzman. Kalite için işin mutfağındayız. İşin özü doğru malzeme ve ekipmanla başlar. Mutfakta olmak, kültürümüze hizmet etmek özümüzde var. 1958'de başlayan 60 yıllık hikayemiz bugün 140 bin metrekare kapalı üretim alanımızda 5 binden fazla ürün çeşidimiz ve 1300 çalışanımızla birlikte Türkiye'nin en büyük mutfak ekipmanları üretici firması olarak devam ediyor. Dünyada yaygın satış ve servis ağımızla 5 kıtaya doğrudan satış, anahtar teslim proje ve servis desteği veriyoruz. Her zaman ilkleri ve yenilikleri üretme arzusuyla her geçen yıl artan ihracatımızla sektörümüzde lider, Türkiye'de tüm sektörler arasında en çok ülkeye ihracat yapan 9. Türk şirketi olmanın gururunu yaşıyoruz. No click to change the year thing. Hmm. The click? Yeah. Do you have it? No. To, to change the media. Um, The pointer. Okay. Let's see. Okay. No, to change it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. How are you guys? Well, so excited to be here. Thank you to Gogman for bringing me from far. Uh, I'm very excited. So. I promise to be quick. Okay. Yes. All right. Excellent. Um I brought some ingredients from down south. I'm talking about uh, really far down south, so I'm lucky. Uh, I'm going to explain you a little bit about uh, some some of where I go. You know, where where it's located. You know, my my restaurant in um, in Santiago, in Chile. Uh, so yeah, well, we started this this this ride about almost 15 years ago. So. By the beginning of the next year, it's going to be 50 years. I still don't believe it. So I'm going to talk about my land in, in, the, in Chile, you know, one of the biggest endemic countries. When we started, uh, I, you know, we, we knew nothing, technically. I, I like to call it happy ignorance. So um, we knew nothing about the land. Uh, and most of the restaurants back then um, we're bringing uh, ingredients from overseas, you know, from different parts of the world. So Chilean ingredients had no meaning or no value at all. Not the best, but the good things were coming from our side of the country. So um, I was in trouble, but we really wanted to start cooking with this beautiful ingredients no one really paid attention to, or no one really experimented with. So. Um, uh, I did this. I don't know if you if you if you notice. <clears throat> this is Chile. This is the land. That's Europe. That's how we look uh, the Ch Chilean territory on top of um, on top of Europe. So it's it's quite long, as you see, and it's divided by um, different regions. I'm going to start talking about very quickly about the central area where Borago is. Is so Santiago, the capital. It's uh, fully surrounded by high mountains and, and um, 
we really have this sense of seasonality, you know? And we, Chileans, we never really pay attention to it. And um, so when you walk in the autumn, you, you can really feel the aromas, you know, of, of the nature. For being a city, for being a capital, it's amazing. You can see these this beautiful spots all over the uh, city in the surroundings where you can grab still ingredients that are very unique in the world. And that's how we start, you know, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we started, um, you know, learning a long, a long learning process, as I like to call it, um, experimenting, you know, uh, with different things. But that time, one ingredient uh, meant only one possibility. We were happy about, uh, if, you, if you look at it, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, yeah. If you look those bushes all over, uh, those are um, Chilean espino. So for instance, we, we discovered the roasting and fermenting those seeds of that tree. We discovered the first Chilean espresso. We never had, we, we cannot produce coffee because Chile is too dry and cold to, to do so. So, well, some wild fruits, you know, that's the way Santiago looks in the winter, fully surrounded by, by these high mountains. And, and it's, yeah, so ingredients that they grow near to the, in the hills of the city, such as this um, mushroom that smells like chocolate and uh, tastes yeast, we call it chocolate mushroom. So we have to invent that, that English almost weapon to cut and catch. It's, it's quite, quite amazing. And we also had to redefine, you know, uh, seasonality. Seasonality is very important to us because <clears throat> in a way uh, describes the way, uh, you know, uh, a culture can eat, you know, and we didn't, we felt that we didn't have that. And so we kind of invented this fifth season uh, we call it um, pre-spring, you know. We notice like in between the end of the winter and beginning of the um, uh, spring, there, there were flashing different ingredients, uh, very unique, by the way. And that, that, that, plant, that plant over there, it was the first alarm that we had uh, in order to, uh, to show us that pre-spring, as we call it, started. So, for instance, we show this, uh, this is a, we call it pre-spring uh, pre vegetables. It grows only four to five weeks a year. You know, when you grab asparagus, you, you, you, you, you want the super nice and tight, you know. But this one, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenon. We, we, we're trying to wield the vegetables, these wild vegetables. It's amazing. It's probably the sexiest uh, vegetable I've ever tried in my life. And what we do, you know, we, this is it's very, it's very funny, you know because we, um, we discovered we had to cut it at 12 o'clock when, when the sun is right in front and before the bloom, before the, the, the blooming is when the plant concentrates the huge amount of energy, so we cut. And, and, and we're trying to wield that plant in, in, the, cooking, in the cooking process. So it's, it's really, really amazing. Anyways, so a few dishes. This is the way that Santiago looks in, during the spring, you know? It's, it's quite amazing, yeah. And, you know, it's, the funny thing is you're in the city and, and, and you, you'll be in less, in, in an hour time, uh, you'll, you'll find the coast, you know. In 45 minutes, you'll be up in the mountains up to 3,000 meters and, and, and you'll get to see things that you won't see anywhere else, anywhere else in the world, probably. So um, this is our coast. Some of the amazing seafood that we have. Our ocean is very cold. And if you think Chile is just like an island, you know, full of very high mountains in the, the Pacific Ocean, there's nothing in front. So it's, it's, it's very amazing. These are our beautiful sea urchins. It's not a big one. It's just a normal one in season, you know? Um, so alophytes, you know, our rocks are fully covered, but this, this rock plants, are, as we call them, uh, sea strawberries, rock clovers, and uh, rock vegetables. This is v very, very incredible. It, you, you, when you think, like a, for instance, like this sea strawberry, um, is a, is a, is a, it, it looks and it feels and it works almost like a strawberry growing on top of the rocks. It smell, it just smells like a strawberry. It tastes like a strawberry, but it's salty. You know, so that's the way it looks inside of the, inside of the, um, 
the skin, you know, the flesh is, is quite unique. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to move quickly up north, so the Atacama Desert, one of the most arid deserts in, in, in, in the earth. And if you see those plants over there, I know it looks like a dry plants on, near to the, to the soil, but trust me, this is, these are like, a, like, I don't know, 150 different kinds of plants and profile of tastes. Uh, and we knew nothing about this. So we started again this, this learning process back then. Uh, she is Patty, one of um, our, uh, the leader of the foraging communities over there that uh, help us to, to explore amazing stuff related to, to the restaurant. Um, this is a cacti that produces a beautiful uh, wild fruit and other plants. In, let me show you this plant. It's called Tola. I was, I was telling uh, Lily, one of the, uh, uh, she's a journalist from Colombia, that we just discovered this wild fruit. This plant we were using for the last, I don't know, seven years. It was very amazing. We were using it, and it, was, it grows up to 4,000 meters in the, in the Atacama Desert. And, and I, um, I was near by, and I saw it, and I saw like, something like a wild fruit. And the community is no longer are, are really connected to it, so no one noticed that. And, and the problem with these plants are super bitter. And, and, you know, we discovered the, the wild fruit of the Tola. This is amazing stuff. It's the most floral thing you can ever, ever try. Uh, but it has a problem, you know. So um, it's tremendously bitter. And, and so we, we decided to treat it like a Japanese are treating umeboshi, you know. So uh, it, it became such a thing, you know. Such a, such a thing. This is very new to us, by the way. Uh, well, Araucania, which is near down south, you know, we're going to move down south after Santiago. If you look on the map, Santiago is right up in the center. If you, if you go down south, it's called uh, Araucania, near to the mountains, volcanoes, and incredible amounts of ingredients, wild fruits, mushrooms, chili and pine nuts, very big, by the way, uh, wild strawberry, and, and different varieties of wild fruits. Again, different potatoes mushrooms, not to mention, um, this is a dewenye, which is like a, almost like an emmy parasite. We, again, we were happy about this ingredients because it meant one possibility. Unfortunately, this long process, learning process, took us a long time to, because seasons are very short, so we have to wait a long time to experiment with them and use them until uh, the next year. And suddenly we started, you know, making notes and after 10 years, we had almost a dictionary, so we, we could move forward. Different, different mushrooms, you know, and people behind the, the, the restaurant, the very, very important. I know it's, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing that many people say, but for us, it's really the, the, the, the it's in the, um, it's part of Borago, really, you know. Uh, so foraging communities, and small producers from the entire country, uh, they allow us to, to create a huge amount of knowledge that we never expected. Uh, nowadays, an ingredient, a uh, Chilean ingredient, means at least 300 possibilities. So it's a huge amount of range and of uh, profiles of taste and, and um, uh, spectrums of flavors as well. So this, this place is really amazing, but they, they hold a huge amount of ingredients, uh, such as the wild apples, you know. I have a funny story behind this wild apple, very little tiny, different varieties, by the way. And, and I remember back then, that's another story, but uh, when the restaurant was open, I mean, uh, empty, and, and we passed to a fully booked restaurant from one, one day to the next, um, because we, we appear in the, in the Latin American 50 Best for the first time ever. I remember calling Don Pasquale, you know, our forager, saying, hey, Don Pasquale, remember the wild apples? that little tiny box, well, we need 500 kilos now. So that's how slowly changed. And, and we, by that time, we were able to, uh, yeah, lambi, some squid. And, and again, we, um, we, we tried to uh, drew, draw, draw uh, a, a different multidimensional uh, schedule and to understand the, the seasonality over the country, you know? from up north to down south. And um, that helps us to, uh, to define four lines of work that we have nowadays. We, we moved the restaurant at the beginning of 2019 
and we created the, our own f uh, research center since we never dream of you know learning this huge amount of ingredients uh, and those four, of li four lines of work are seaweeds uh, small fish such as anchovies you know and um, uh, Chilean sardines we've come so many possibilities with it uh, we have more than 700 kinds of seaweeds we only use four or five traditionally in Chile I mean late, late tradition you know and so we, we were learning from the natives and also creating knowledge on top of that and sea carrots you know so we started uh, doing different processes such as uh, hydrolysis fermenting and and so this suddenly opened our minds into the new spectrum of way of cooking this is a seaweed that that that is the only honeycomb seaweed in the world and and and it's it's very amazing can you know can measure five meters long um you know allow us to to produce incredible dishes such as the bladder of seaweed you know we we stuff with mushrooms and um yeah the the flower salavango of the, the roots of the seaweed you know seaweeds have no roots but this one is is really amazing you know and allowed us to to to hydrolyze this this broth that is it tastes almost like a soy sauce without being fermenting and it's it's really really really amazing and the other line of work it was of course rock plants you know but also mushrooms we have tons of native mushrooms in chile and um but not only ones that your eyes can see for sure they're very interesting we start digging in dif different processes very crazy stuff that we got in mind we truly believe creativity it's it's our you know our we we feel it in our guts is very very important to us so we start aging you know mushrooms in different height uh, hard to do in, in, in different ways you know uh producing beautiful you know this is that we never dream of with profiles of taste again and but the most important thing you know not only the mushrooms that you can see uh were interesting but we we create incredible amount of knowledge on on in, uh, mushrooms that we we don't our eyes are unable to see you know and and there's a thing if you, if you look on the on the huge amount of ingredients that we have in the land um it it, it kind of replicates in a microscope in the chilean native forest you know if i make you drag the finger on top of the leaves of certain amount of uh native trees you'll taste it you won't believe it it's a huge amount of umami we're now experimenting with that growing fungus to to different processes and and in you know uh, we have two two lines of work two areas i'm sorry um op we call it and which means all the processes and um in our our test area where we play you know kefir it's you know kefir it's a big thing in in, in, in turkey but but is also we can adopt it in chile and is one of the biggest traditions so this little guy means nowadays like at least 300 possibilities we do many many things with this guy and and um so creating i don't know uh pajarito we call it pajarito which means a small little tiny bit and we use the whey infusing on fermented leaves or or pajarito cream or we use it as a season as for seasoning you know uh we also created um a, a new way to to understand mesos i know it's an it's a trendy thing but this is an old thing for us uh we we were doing misos with no beans in three weeks instead of a month or a year or a year with, with super high quality grabbing any native ingredient uh just in different ways you know uh castor apple treated as cheese for for this is a six month six month old uh castor apple it is amazing um and what i'm going to show you guys now it's uh well uh, this is another interesting thing so mushrooms uh allowed us to um to experiment with lignin with wood uh so this fungus can can help us to bring more flavors into different woods kinds wood kinds and and leaves as well using it for different doing different dishes and make plants eatable that they weren't because the huge amount of uh wood feel in the mouth so um anyways what i'm going to show you now it's it's a um it's something that is very interesting uh i'm not going to show you what we're doing now it's a very old recipe actually very old we don't do it anymore it's back i'm, I'm going to go back in 2012 is a dessert 
but how, you know, normally we used to serve, um, we used to serve dishes about ingredients that they grow in at this time of the year, you know, this is happening in different places in, in the Chilean territory. Um, but this recipe, what I'm going to show you, it's absolutely opposite to that thinking at that time and created, a, you know, an apex and on our way of thinking through, through creating dishes. So I'm going to show you a video about the native, native tree called peumo and, and the way we think it. So can, can we see the, the video? Um, can we see the video now? Yeah. Okay, so this is one year around this, this, this um, native tree, you know? Uh, so we were, 2012, we, we wanted to do something for the next year. So we started looking at the, uh, at the tree. And this is how it looks, you know, in the winter time. The only wildflower it grows in the winter because it loses the, the, the leaves and it produces so much sugar. The, the tree it stresses and, and, and it, it's, it's very, very beautiful taste profile. And so we decided to start that year Doing, doing something with the wood, with the leaves, and, and different elaborations. Can we raise the volume of the music, if you don't mind? Yeah, so um, we're gonna start showing different elaborations with the, um, yeah. So we started uh, doing, producing the peumo, the, the paste that we ferment that year, we grab the wild fruits and we ferment it for the next year and we treat it as a candy, so we produce that. The same year, we grab huge amounts of, of those, uh, uh, the, the, the wild fruits, we produce the vinegar, one year old vinegar, and, and, and, um, and we're gonna contrast all of that with, uh, this is, yeah, a white chocolate, roasted white chocolate, you know, in order to produce like a, something like a crumble or something. Forget about the, the technique or the recipes. Just I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm going to point the idea behind. So the next year, when we were ready to, to serve the desserts, we grabbed the, the, the peumos, you know? We grabbed the peumos. By the way, we were grabbing the, the, the, the wild fruit at different times of the year, even when it was unripe. To, yeah, so fresh peumos, we're going to stuff with, the, um, with this paste because it's very soft, so we, we, we thought it needed more personality. So we're going to stuff it with, the, um, with this paste that will give a huge, huge uh, personality to it. Um, so we're going to cover it. And we're also going to put that part, paste on top of the plate, you know, because it's very, very intense. We're going to blend that uh, uh, white roasted chocolate. So remember, this is an old recipe uh, from back then. You know, and um, so we grab the uh, the wild fruits, the, the the unripe, and we cook it on a syrup, a smoked syrup on the same uh, on the same wood. So we're gonna put it on top of the of the plate as a dif different contrast. Contrast, yeah. We're gonna do the. When the fruit is start to ripen, you know, to get ready to eat it in March, so end of our summer, uh, we we grab it, we smoke it, and we uh, soak it in pisco, and then we we you know when the even more ripe. No, I'm sorry, that that was in January. It's still very unripe, so we we treat it like a umeboshi, you know. So we also gonna wanna going to use the the, the waffle at different times in the year and you know when we were ready to serve the the, the dessert we we were grabbing the leaves the fresh leaves first ones of the of the season like and so we we we, we pickle for for about a month and it feels like a beautiful uh texture like a, almost like like a seaweed you know and we wanted the people to have the sense of this idea one year around the peumo without saying that much you know and then we noticed this, the sprouts were coming of the same tree. Beautiful, beautiful texture. And remember the vinegar. So we, we did the one year old vinegar uh, sorbet. And we're going to put a skewer. So 
we're going to put also on top of the skewer the, the, the wall fruits. So you can make yourself an idea what is to grab the, the wall fruits out of the skewer. So, yeah, that was the idea, you know? Back then, so this really changed the way we, we, we were thinking. Um, so I'm gonna do a very short demo here. This is, I, w I was trying to, um, I don't know if you can show this with the camera. Um, I'm gonna put it on top of the plates. So, yeah, so I, I brought like a, oh, this one. There you go, perfect. So, um, yeah, I guess it's easy for me to move behind the, the scenes. Uh, no, no spoons. Uh, could I get a spoon? Maybe could I get a spoon or a few? Yeah, plastic spoons, whatever. Plastic spoons, yes. Ah, I have them. No worries, I have them here. Sorry, got it. Okay, so anyways, this is a snack we, we, we just got uh, at the menu now. We, we reopened the, um, the restaurant and, and, um, and I brought these mushrooms. Unfortunately, the, the other ones, they didn't make it, but, but I wanted to show it. Um, this is an Emmy parasite. I, I think you saw it in the pictures. These are li little tiny ones, and we call it Diwenya. It grows only four, four weeks a year, and, I'm, and, and we do this kind of candy, candy skewer. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a, like a real branch, so we want people to taste the same idea, you know? It, it really follows. It really follow on our, you know, our minds to, to produce something deep in different layers of flavor. So what we do is uh, we do this dough, you know, which is mother dough, really, with, um, and we're treating, we're sprouting and, and um, fermenting the seeds at the same time in order to do a very different kind of amanato, like Japanese, you know, Japanese fermenting. And so we, we, we do on this, inside of this dough, we put it and it's just tremendously beautiful because it, you build different layers of flavor. And, and after this, you know, um, you know we, we kind of shape it up and we give, we, we give the, the, the, the sort of, you know, um, the shape of the native tree and where, where the mushrooms are growing. And we do this paste, which is very similar to, to that recipe because we started doing you know, using different wall fruits and different manas in order to, to produce this paste, which has different layers of flavor based on umami. And so what we do, it's, okay, I'm gonna put a little bit here. A little bit there. Yes. So this is, um, at the moment, we're serving this guy with uh, something we call um, Chilean castor apple, which is, or chirimoya, you know? So we're gonna put the mushrooms. These mushrooms are very, very intense. It reminds me a little bit, the profile of taste like a matsutake kind, you know? Um, unfortunately, I got only little tiny ones. Normally we put little, little, little, bigger, little bigger mushrooms and, and uh, it tastes really amazing. So we stuff them. They're, they're inside. This one is really bad, but the inside, it's, it's, like a, it's like orange, you know? It looks like very, it's, it's very special. And so normally we, we stuff it with, with the orange puree. Um, and uh, yeah, so we use in uh, castor apple mixing with pajarito cream. So it will look something like this. You know, very, we remember we call pajarito cream to, to kefir. This is really amazing. It's like, so we're so jealous from French. I don't know, Elaine, if you there, we're so jealous because we have no French, uh, no uh, creme fraiche in Chile. So we have to use this, but it's, it's still there, you know? So anyway, uh, we, uh, we serve it with this and we do, we, Paint it with different oils of different uh, fermented uh, plants and native native um, uh, wild fruits. You know, 
that it grows in the forest, so you can really taste uh, something that is flashing for a very short amount of time during the year. Yeah. I'm going to... Hold on. And what we do with this plant, it's, it's we, we're grabbing one of those oils and we're pressing with a lot of heat. So it's, it's very, has a very delicate texture, but fully intensive aroma and tastes as well, you know? And so we're going to put a little more because it's very delicious. Yeah, so more or less it will look, you can see it, so you grab it and what we do, I don't know if we can go back to the, uh, to the images of the presentation, can we? So I'm going to show you, can we go back yeah, to the presentation, would it be possible? Yeah. So yeah, well, anyways, this is the dish. Normally we, we mix the chirimoya, treat it like cheese for a few months. You, you know, we were really treating uh, vegetables like cheese for a long, long time, as you would do with Parmigiano or with beautiful cheeses. Uh, and, and so we mix it, and so you grab the skewer with the hand, and right now, you know, this, this mushroom is in season in, in, the pre in, the, in the spring menu, I'm sorry. So you grab it with the hands, maybe a few bites and that's it. So thank you so much. So excited to share with you. And by the way, Borrego came back uh, at least 100 times more delicious than what it was before pandemic. We've been closed for a year and a half. Get your asses down south south. We're waiting for you. Love you all.